الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين نبينا محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين Respected viewers, my dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته There was a man by the name of Ali ibn Abi Hamza who wanted to meet the seventh holy imam Imam Musa ibn Ja'far ibn al-Kadhim salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Imam al-Kadhim knew that this man wanted to meet him during the Hajj pilgrimage. And he said to somebody that, look, tomorrow somebody will ask you, where is Musa ibn Ja'far? Bring him to me. The next day, this Ali ibn Abi Hamza was indeed brought to the Imam exactly as the Imam said. When he was brought to the Imam, Imam alayhi salam said to him, that because of what you have just done, the severing of the relations and the creating of the problems with your own family members, your brother will pass away, or indeed has passed away. By the time you come back from the Hajj, you'll see that he's no longer alive. And this man was very much taken back by this because he realized the Imam السلام, has knowledge which other people do not. He asked him, what about myself? I'm also uh, part of this issue. He said, well, because you look after an aunt of yours and you visit her on a regular basis, then your life has been prolonged and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has safeguarded you. This story is one that highlights the importance that the Ahl al-Bayt emphasize upon when it comes to Salatul Raham, enjoining blood relations or relatives as far as their well-being and relationship with them is concerned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in numerous instances highlights the importance of Salatul Raham, enjoining good relations with the family and relatives. In Surah Al-Ra'ad, verse 21, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلْ Those who keep strong and tie the bonds that the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be uh, strengthened. Imam Al-Baqir, صلوات الله وسلامه عليه, narrates and says that the Holy Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has said, أوصي الشاهد من أمتي الغائب منهم. I want the present to pass on the message to the ones who are not present. ومن في أصلاب الرجال وأرحام النساء إلى يوم القيامة. And I am giving this message to those who are in the loins of men and in the wombs of the mothers until the day of judgment. So not even it's powerful. It is to reach everyone. أن يصل الرحم. Must, you must, the Prophet of Islam says, ensure that your relationship with your family members is good and that you put the effort and invest time and commitment. Even if that individual from your family member is so far away from you that you have to walk or at least travel for about a year. Because that is part of religion. This is in Al-Kafi Sharif, Volume 1. Likewise, the Quran comes forward and says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ uh, Fear Allah, be God conscious in terms of your relationship with your blood relatives or family members generally. Why? The religion of Islam does not view society as individualistic excellence or individualistic development, but rather collectively it's very important that there is a good relationship, there's harmony, there is uh, synchronization as far as people's uh, love and respect towards each other. And positive, cohesive, good relationship is sought for in a society, in a community, and definitely results in 
um, uh, an increasing love and stronger bonds between the believers. Looking after the king's folk, therefore, was a, uh, uh, an important virtue that the Ahl al-Bayt emphasized upon in numerous occasions. The uh, Imam salam, Imam al-Sadiq says in a, in a narration uh, from Al-Bihar, volume 71, إن الرجل ليصل رحمه وقد بقي من عمره ثلاث سنين that uh, the uh, human being sometimes uh, enjoys good relations with their family members and, uh, and there's only three years left in their lifespan because remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sets the lifespan uh, for the human being but there is a lifespan which can be changed there's a lifespan that can increase and one that can decrease and Imam says by doing that if they've got three years uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves it to 30 years وَيَقْطَعُهَا وَقَدْ بَقِيَ مِنْ عُمْرُهُ ثَلَاثُ سِنِينَ ثَلَاثِينَ سَنَةً They might sever the relationship with the family and they've got 30 years left, Allah will change it to three years. And this is very important. Similar to the story of Ali ibn Abi Hamza, that one of the features about Salatul Raham is that it impacts the lifespan of the human being. And that's something to keep in consideration. There's no doubt, of course, above all, it's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that should give assurance that it's the right thing to do. Today, if I'm thinking about enjoying good relations with my family members, one of the most important inspiration and motivation should be that the Almighty has uh, commanded this uh, to be done and the Ahl al-Bayt have acted upon it. As, I'm my, as my role models, I should indeed follow in their uh, footsteps. Um, the other benefits are that the uh, effort to enjoy good relations with the family indeed lessens the painfulness and the difficulty at the time of death. Imam al-Sadiq says, مَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ سَكَرَاتُ الْمَوْتِ فَلْيَكُنْ لِقَرَابَتِهِ وَصُولًا وَلِوَالِدَيْهِ بَارَّ in الْبِحَارِ Whomsoever, the Imam says, according to the narration, uh, wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lessen the impact of the sakaratul maut, of the excruciating pain and the suffering at the time of death, of the extraction of the soul from the body, let them be kind and generous uh, and uh, treat their family well, as well as their parents. What it also does, of course, is it protects wealth and property. Um, the, uh, the Salatul Raham, the Holy Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, he says, Salatul Raham, to Ammiru Diyar, wa tazidu fil a'mar, wa in kana ahluha ghayru akhiyar. Even if the people are not righteous, even if the people are not necessarily believers as such, unless one, one feels for their own faith or by supporting them, they are helping them in the spreading of anti Muslim statements, that's something else. But by and large, if they're just not necessarily good people, but severing of the relationship is not something that we should be uh, somehow uh, supporting or uh, looking to actually do. And the consequences of severing the relationship in the Quran are quite strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in um, uh, Surah Muhammad, uh, verse 22 says, فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطَّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ Do you think that you can spread corruption on the earth and sever the relationship with your family members? أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهِ They are the ones who are the recipients of the la'na of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Almighty withdraws His mercy from them. A man came to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, what is what are kind of actions are detested by the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala? The Prophet of Islam says a shirk, polytheism. ثم قال ماذا قال قطيعة الرحم. After that, he said to deliberately sever or stop the relationship with family members. ثم الأمر بالمنكر والنهي عن المعروف. This is Usul al Kafi, Volume Two, Page One Hundred and Fifty One. He says thereafter is to enjoin evil and to forbid the good is detested by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Zayn al-Abideen al-Sajjad salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi 
uh, three times would say mal'oonun mal'oonun mal'oon. The one who does this deliberately is indeed the recipient uh, of the withdrawing of the mercy of the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Once uh, he had a family member who would constantly be complaining about Imam Zain al Abidin that he does not do enough and so on and so forth. Whereas on a continuous basis, Imam at night would bring him food, would help him, would support him without revealing who Imam salam was. And after the martyrdom of Imam Zain al Abidin, this family member of the Imam, uh, perhaps a distant family member, recognized it was Zain al Abidin, it was Ali ibn al Hussein, and felt incredibly remorseful that all these. Uh, years or this period of time, he is being critical of the same person who has invested so much in the support and in the help of uh, this particular uh, person. So, what is needed today is to look at the example of the Ahl al Bayt and to follow in their footsteps in regards to making sure that we. Uh, sacrifice whatever we can in the strengthening of the bond that exists within the families. Unfortunately, what we are finding in this day and age is that the marriages in certain family setups are being split and are uh, being affected by this issue, you know, bickering, uh, backstabbing, backbiting, slander between family members, and therefore it's weakening the marital relationship between the husband and wife. If people are in business with their family members, sometimes there's a lack of trust, sometimes it's betrayal, disloyalty, and then thereafter, there's very little forgiveness that is happening out there, too much seeking of vengeance and revenge and people taking each other to court and so on and so forth. Of course, in some instances, one is uh, needing to do that to recuperate the losses, but the spirit of understanding the dealing with the family members is, is, is slowly being lost and sometimes even religious dispute amongst the family members can lead to some kind of God forbid hatred or animosity or the dislike between them and the uh, criticism and the backbiting that sometimes can actually happen is one that needs to be uh, reminded as, uh, as believers to be careful from falling into that particular trap of the shaitan. What is really crucial is um, if, for example, a family member has upset us or has uh, taken our rights away, then we try our best to exercise forgiveness and to be patient with them. And if they've asked for forgiveness, to forgive them too. Sometimes we deal with cases where people have said, I have gone to this particular family member or this relative and I have said, look, I have wronged you, please forgive me, and they refuse to do so. And sometimes shaitan comes to our minds and says, why should I forgive? You have hurt me in such a way, you have done, in, uh, you've committed this particular act against me, and I don't want to forgive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Chapter 24, verse 22. These are clear Quranic verses. Let them forgive and to indeed look away from the action. Do you not want God the Almighty Himself to indeed uh, forgive us? Is it not, not, not something that we are looking for? وَإِن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى Chapter 2, verse 237. The Prophet uh, of Islam, Rasul al-Azam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says to somebody, shall I tell you what is the best of that this world and akhirah, what is makarimul akhlaq in another narration, al afu amman zalamak, to be forgiving of the one who has oppressed us. Watasilu man qata'ak. So, if we find sometimes that our family members or relatives have stopped their relationship with us, we instigate it, we make it happen. We use chances like the month of Ramadan, Ashura, Arba'een, Hajj time, for example, Eid. These are occasions in which we can look to our family members and reignite the relationship and keep the bond or at least re-establish the bond. So uh, a, a high degree on status of akhlaq from the Ahl al-Bayt is to uh, re-establish the relationship even if somebody himself has severed it. And 
to do good for that towards that individual who has necessarily wronged. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن The good and the bad are not the same. Go with that which is better in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody's wronged us, well, we can wrong them back. But that's not necessarily going to achieve much. It's not good for our spiritual development. It's not going to bring us thawab. And it may make the situation worse. The Prophet of Islam encourages us to do that which is right, which is to reciprocate the bad with good. وَإِعْطَاءُ مَنْ حَرَمَكْ This is an al-bihar. To give that which necessarily has uh, has, uh, forbidden you from uh, getting. So for example, sometimes you might have asked somebody and they themselves have uh, been reluctant to help you or support you, a family friend or a member family. And um, now you are in a position to help them as well. Then we should be looking to assist uh, and this sometimes is a battle within ourselves. Shaitan wants personal satisfaction, ego-centric thinking. Why should I, you know, they've hurt me, let me hurt them. This sense of revenge and vendetta and things like that. Shaitan wants us to strengthen ourselves in that area, whereas the Quranic teachings as applied by the Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt want us to break those uh, idols that exist within us and we will indeed become stronger individuals if we lift ourselves to do that which is pleasing to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. An important feature uh, of Salatul Raham is that we should be looking to support our family members and uh, our relatives as far as assistance and charity and financial help is concerned. Meaning that if we have family members who are in need, if we have family members who are looking for some kind of assistance and help, they come first. They should be ones who are looked at first and assisted and helped first before we uh, look at others. Sadly, what we find today is that sometimes even after a person has passed away, like for example a father or an uncle, there's a dispute which sometimes turns ugly uh, between the sons, between the inheritors, and they are, you know, fighting each other over money, fighting each other over belongings and possession. The shaitan can get between them and, you know, plant the seeds of discord and hatred and jealousy and envy between them. Look at what the shaitan did as far as the, uh, uh, the, the brothers of Yusuf salam is concerned. Look at how he came to them and said, look, you know, your brother is more beloved to your father than you are. Why don't you get rid of him? And that satanic thought developed and developed even further, that they wanted to kill Yusuf alayhi salam. So one of them said, don't kill him, place him in a well. That those feelings can, if they're not treated, and if they're not looked at with um, uh, careful consideration, can sometimes lead the human being even to commit other acts which are hugely uh, problematic and may, uh, God forbid, uh, result in uh, uh, consequences which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us ourselves to fall into. We should not necessarily be influenced in society as well by those around us uh, in terms of the negative traits. If people around us, I remember, seeing that uh, the uh, individuals, some individuals, non-believers, they have not spoken to their father or parents for how many years? God knows how many years. And sometimes what happens is that it's sad that in our own communities, in different parts of the world, within the Shia communities, within the Muslim community, you hear of people, uncles, cousins, brothers and sisters, years have not even spoken with each other. Why is that the case? Is it something that 
um, serious? Why isn't there be attempts? Of course, if we have tried and we have failed, then we should continue to try. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe one day will soften the hearts of the people who may be um, affected uh, or somehow angered by certain actions. But we should not give up. We should certainly continuously strive and not necessarily be influenced by people who don't want us to create a cohesive state of a relationship between uh, our family members as advised, as encouraged, as practiced by the Ahl al-Bayt uh, The glorious family of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be, uh, be upon them, sought at every opportunity when it comes to family members to keep the uh, passion and the, uh, the relationship as far as family members are concerned alive and to ensure that that model remains vividly within the practice and in the thoughts of people by and large. Now, what we have to do is have a plan, have a carefully orchestrated and designed system of uh, initiative or objective in restoring back relationships. How does this happen? Well, the Quran tells us that it is permissible, for example, if it comes to Islah Dhatul Bain, in terms of the Salatul Raham, if we look for um, the idea of even telling somebody that that person loves you so much, even if it's not true, that the so-called distortion of the truth is permissible in this regard. So if I need to make two people speak again or visit each other again, then I can go to each other and say to them that, look, he desires to get closer to you or get back the relationship better, thinks highly of you. That is good. That is recommended to that extent that Islamic teachings encourage us to focus, to put our efforts, to invest whatever we can to maintain the uh, good relationship within the family setup as much as possible at all the different levels, infusing patience, forgiveness, dedication, even sometimes generosity, acts of generosity can assist, even sometimes generosity can enhance a, a relationship between people. And the other feature uh, that we have to uh, understand and uh, appreciate is that words may hurt. Words may be um, too powerful sometimes. Even in today, modern day, um, there are tools to communicate. So we have to be very careful. And when it comes to our family members, our relatives, as well as others, of course, but whilst we're talking about Salatul Rahman and enjoying good relations, we have to understand that our way of communication with others requires us to use the right terminology. The Prophet of Islam, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says that, you know, when you communicate with others, it's like the water that we place for plants. If too much water is placed on the plant, then it dies. Likewise, if we use too much words or we use the wrong words, then it may have adverse impacts. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen the family relationships, to help us spread and strength and keep the spirit of Salatul Raham and for those who have severed or have weaker relationships for them to restore those relationships as inspired by the Ahlul Bayt alayhum assalam wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salli lahumma ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin